Our roots, our veritable roots, lie in that black stuff that you see on your screens. Now that black stuff is dust, carbon-based stardust, and it's incredibly interesting to, pot, to contemplate that you and I are born of the material cooked in the interiors of stars. These grains are incredibly cold, some at temperatures of minus 250 degrees centigrade or even colder. And this cosmic dust is all pervasive. Whenever we use our telescopes and look at different areas of the cosmos, we just see before us this awesome black mist pervading our cosmos, which is cosmic dust. Now, in the early 1990s, we at the University of the Witwatersrand uh, increased the mass of dust present in the universe by 90%. What that means is that astronomers had missed 90% of the dust mass in the universe. And you can see that those blackish areas. Why are they so specifically interesting? Because he has a view of my eldest son, our eldest son, Aaron, being born. And he is made of the stuff which we are studying tonight. The stuff cooked in the interiors of stars. Professor Francis Thackeray from our university uh, penned these words, which I love. Life defies entropic chaos, ordered by generic laws, themselves mutating, changing, struggling, life's free to find new open doors. So, on to the theme of tonight. The subject which, is, which beholds, attracts our attention are comets. Comets wearing a long hair, wearing long hair in the Greek, and from the Oxford English Dictionary, the term from the, the Greek root word means long-haired star. And there, hanging in all its glory and splendor, is Comet Bennett, which uh, I saw as a schoolboy in the year 1969 from the back garden of our home uh, in Krugersdorp, which is now Mohali City. Comets are really extraordinary, beautiful to behold from um, the Earth. This is Comet McNaught, which displayed a magnificent head, which you can see towards the left of your screen, and then myriads of flowing tails. Now, why are comets so important? Well, first of all, perhaps the most famous comet in all of history is this one, Comet Halley. And you'll notice that comets consist of different components. First of all, you've got the blazing, fiery head of the comet, seen so clearly towards the right-hand region of your frame. The head of the comet contains the nucleus. And comets are really dirty snowballs, which I'll elaborate upon presently. But comets create a tremendous dread in, um, in the history books and in the pages of history. For example, at the top of this one, you've got Stella, you've got a comet at the top, and the people are looking uh, in utter shock and, and awe away from Comet Halley. This is part of the Bayeux Tapestry of 1066, four months after Harold's coronation. And so, as a matter of history, comets have struck fear, as well as wonder, but a lot of fear into the hearts of men and women. Now, what exactly are comets? A comet is an icy, small, dirty snowball, which, when passing close to the sun, heats up and produces a glorious tail, or often a myriad of tails. This, of course, is due to the effect of the sun, in the solar radiation impinging upon the cometary head and its ices, creating these long tails. I well recall these words by Fred Whipple in about 1973 when he said a comet is the closest thing to nothing which still is something. And that is certainly true today. 
The orbital periods of comets can vary from several years to several millions, millions, of, years, millions of years, but where do they originate from is really the issue at hand. So if you look at this image carefully, you'll see our solar system, Pluto's orbit is indicated, and the Kuiper belt, um, uh, belt of very dusty, rocky uh, particles and dusty rocks which are orbiting the Sun. But you'll notice that that just fits into a very minute area of, the, uh, of this image, which you can see on both of your screens. This entire, our entire solar system, together with the disk here, the Kuiper belt, fits into a very small region, surrounding which is a very famous cloud called the Oort cloud. And it's from the Oort cloud that the drama tonight will unfold. Now, in the heads of, the, of comets are the nuclei, which range in size from a few hundred meters to a few tens of kilometers. And they are composed of loose collections of ice, dust, as well as chunky rocks. So, this is what the grains of cosmic dust actually look like. These are the hands of the late Professor Mayo Greenberg, one of the world's greatest laboratory astrophysicists of all time, whom I had the privilege of writing a book with uh, several years ago. And these cosmic dust grains contain many different elements. They are extraordinary in nature. I will not go through all the chemical compositions tonight, but you can see that your stellar origins are indeed very rich and uh, quite extraordinary, containing hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and many other elements besides. Back to comets. Comets contain pristine material from the epoch of the formation of our solar system some 4.5 billion years ago. What specifically interests me, of course, are the grains, the cosmic grains of dust, which existed prior to the giant molecular cloud collapsing out of which our uh, solar system was formed. These are called pre-solar grains. So you have dust from thermally pulsating asymptotically giant branch stars, uh, from novae and from supernovae. And so comets come from the outer echelons, as you can see, of the solar system. And we've done a lot of work over the years in finding carbon stars. These stars produce copious amounts of dust, which form a very important part of the puzzle in uh, tonight's um, discovery. So, of course, the one way of securing cometary material is to go there. This, of course, costs billions of dollars or euros, but it's been done. For example, here is a depiction of the Stardust mission sent to Comet Wild. And um, it was a 300 kilogram robotic space probe. It um, went right into the heart of Comet Wild. It collected, as you can see over here, the Stardust dust collector with its aerogels. And so that's one way of securing matter from a comet. Why are we so interested in this? That will be elaborated presently. But let me just say from the outset that cometary material, as I've already stressed, is so pristine. You've got this ice which has been untouched since the formation of our solar system some 4.5 billion years ago. The only known impact of a comet with a planet uh, occurred in 1994. Uh, I recall doing, I don't know how many television broadcasts from the university, as comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 fragmented and plowed into Jupiter. It was absolutely awesome. The speed was around 60 kilometers per second. But tonight marks a first. Tonight marks a story, a detective story, of catastrophic proportions. And it's the first known documented case in history of this happening on the Earth. 
And that's what makes tonight, as Professor Habiba said, so special. Towards the right, you can see Earth's blast from the past, artist's impression of what we are going to be talking about this evening, together with uh, Pharaoh's scarab. And uh, this will be, this forms part of the wonderful link of the story. And so that concludes Act One.